Does that sound good? Well, I mean, it sounds fine to me. Okay. I I'm just... gonna max like max. I'm gonna like lower my volume max here. I'll just place about midway and we'll see how that goes. Status And I think we're live, sir. Uh, how does your mic sound? Uh, let me turn the volume up. I'm coming through, okay? Double checking. No, we get anybody in the chat, we can just ask. Yep. Always the way to go. All right, anyway, so, uh, bah, we're live. Uh, another episode of Total Justice Gaming. Uh, Joe and Jesse, as always. Maybe not for too long, but, you know, we'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, Jesse yep. came back from a whirlwind tournament that was Nationals. We have Melee in. Talk about Jesse's going to give us the rundown of how he did. I heard uh, you did quite well in teams, and I don't know what happened with you in singles. It was a busy day for I, all of us I that day. Like, I came in like 23rd overall in, in singles. Ah. I, am not, I, I am not complaining. I went 4-3, and three, and I was... One and two at the break, and I came back. I was one and three at round four, and I won my back four. I won the back three for I, I came in a high up point in the field that I'm happy with. My deck decided though it didn't like me in the end, but I will see. We'll get into what I played on that in just a moment. So, uh, first of all, let's talk about teams. So, oh, first of all, I, I teamed with our. Happy assistant Jeffrey Giggles Khan and the man, the myth, the Poughkeepsie legend Jack Hale. Uh, and I don't know what was going on on Friday, but man, I was just me and Jeffrey were on top of things. Um, I'm gonna tell you something hilarious. So, first four rounds, every round was Jeff and I win 2 0 or 2 1. And uh, Jack just barely gets done with game one. That was what happened every round for all of Swiss. Uh, round five, we played against uh, Piglet, Keenan, and Matthew uh, Chittles. Chittles? Chittles? Great guy. Nice to meet, uh, great to meet him. Uh, and they were playing Ryu Dimitri, the Napalm Man. And we literally didn't care about the match at all, except for we just wanted to know what they were playing and how their decks were built. <laughs> and we kind of, I didn't even sideboard in my game. I just was like, I'm going to sit here and learn things and see what his deck does. And he then found out he was playing Flying Amount of Spears and Ryu, just like Jeffrey. And I'm like, well, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun when we have to play him in, in Top Cuts. Um, our first round of Top Cuts, we played against. Uh, Mike Hardiman, um, I do apologize who his other friend from the UK was, and Joe Horth. Uh, I got really lucky, and uh, I beat Joe Horth uh, with my my Death Napalm bat. He was playing good Ryu. Uh, that deck was a baby. Like I, I thought, it, like the, it's all big damage. It's there's no there's no pokes in the version of good of Ryu. It's everything seven damage, and you just gotta hopefully not hopefully live. Uh, let's see. Then we, top four, we played against, I, I, got, I guess it was like the Brett family <laughs> of, of uh, Kurt Polka, Tanner, and Devin. Uh, that was kind of crazy. Uh, we won the dice roll, and I think that's what kind of gave, uh, kind of gave us at least a chance of winning. Uh, Jack Hale got paired against Devin, who was playing this crazy all-wall Turbo Man deck. I went head-to-head -head with another Napalm Man deck, and Jeffrey went head-to-head -head with another Ryu deck. It was, the, it was a hot mess. Um, uh, they, we got lucky. We won those games. 
and then we went to Sunday, and the one time I think we really needed a dice roll to get selection for 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 te- for the matches, we didn't, and my deck to finally just decided after all weekend being able to kill people on turn two consistently, just to go, hey, I'm just gonna you're just gonna lose you're gonna you're gonna lose on turn two every time. I'm like, oh, okay then. <laughs> But yeah, Keynes was amazing. Uh, Jack Hale, thank you very much for pl- for playing with Jeff and I. We appreciate it greatly. You may not think you did a lot for us, but the fact that we could pair you off and make somebody's day miserable because of it was so good and so mm-hmm. satisfying. Um, yeah. So then on Saturday with singles, um, I played Air Rikuo. Uh, I didn't, I found out that Friday that Rodney from the, who I felt was on the team that won team finals, uh, was playing Air Rico as well. Uh, we played probably about a 10 card difference in our build. Um, I kind of was a little more controlly than him, I guess, and not as much on the burst plan, but good job for him. He made top cuts, he made top 16, he made, he did everything. And hey, Jesse, raise your mic a little bit. They're saying. Raise my mic a little? Yeah. One second, everybody. Da, da, da. Audio. Audio settings. Automatically adjust mic settings. All right, guys, I hope that's a lot better. It's the best I can do. I'm just going to put it to auto adjust again. Uh, that's set at my highest level. I'll just, vary. I'll just go to whatever level is necessary. So, uh, singles, Jeffrey Singles Khan came in second place after Swiss and got diversified playing Ryu. Jack Hale came in fourth place playing Napalm Man, uh, because he didn't want to think. And he got diversified by Piglet, uh, which is crazy, uh, I did, I came in, like, I went four and three, I came in 23rd. I was happy. I, I was not real. I was more focused on teams for the next day. I just wanted to play out Swiss because I wanted all the promos. That was more important to me. Oh, man. It was crazy. Um, congratulations to the, salt, the King of the Salt, Phil Birch. He decided to pilot an 820, an 820 with uh, Flying Panty Girl to to the victory uh, with a deck that drew a million, just drew, draws a million cards. That's all that deck does. It draws a million cards and plays no Mai and kills you, and you just kill your opponent. It's amazing. It was re- like, watching it in action, you're like, oh my god, this deck's playing eight ones. Oh my god, it's playing eight ones and three twos. Oh my god, it's actually working. <laughs> uh but yeah, the finals were kind of everywhere. Like I, the like Mark LeBlanc kind of went on the hot streak playing Felicia through top eight. Like he beat Napalm Man, and then he beat the Ryu, and then he like like he was like on a hot streak. Like he was just playing a very controlling air deck and just going head first into everything. Oh. Okay, so before we get really in depth into any of this stuff. Uh, a large, large stink was made about the meta. So, I was not there. I do not play. I have no say in what goes on in the game. I'm going to make this okay. very clear before anybody jumps on my butt. Okay. What was actually going on in the meta? Because I hear it's fine. I hear it's crap. I hear... Turn two, getting buried faster than John Cena can do it. I okay. hear ridiculously positive. It's the greatest meta we've had in a while. It is just so over the top everywhere. I want your opinion because you were there. Okay. So, I'm going to give you my, my direct opinion of the meta is if you don't, if you decide to ignore uh, the four best decks in the four, the four, the, which are offici- officially the four best decks in the format, i.e., a Napalm Man, Ryu, 
I'm going to say this is Kim and I guess the Turbo Man, I guess the wife kind of draw all back uh, is the best way to fall about it. But like Ryu, Napalm Man, Kim. We'll just say Life Toolbox. It, it, yeah, like, yeah, like the toolbox thing. Like, if you have no game plan for those decks and you did not plan for, to play against any of those decks, you're, you're, you were not prepared. There was a lot of people that felt that I could definitely tell by their team selections that they weren't repa- prepared for the big decks. And they weren't even run. There was a lot of decks that were not running one of the core one of the core decks. Uh, like I would, I think if I could get a look at the top eight for teams, I bet every team had either a Ryu, a Napalm Man, a Kim, or a Turbo Man on it. And I'm pretty sure I'm right right now that it either had all of those. Or one or two, or just one. I don't think if there was a team in the top eight that had just none of them, good to those guys because they had they 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 were really must have had a plan for the meta or had it got really lucky. That's all I can say. Because the best team, the the final the top four teams all had at least one or two of those characters on their on their team. Uh, the fact that the team that won was only playing Kim, that. Well, they also were, Mark was playing Turbo Man, which is ridiculous. Um, yeah, that deck still scares me. Uh, things that people like, I, I, I definitely feel that people wanted to play their fun decks, and they couldn't. And they kind of were getting steamrolled by decks that were actually legitimate. And that's what happened, and I'm going to say this is a, and I mean this in the nicest way to everybody, when you have a tournament that's play a major, and you're playing for cardboard, uh, if you're going for the good times, play your fun deck. And do a, if you go three three, you go four three, you did your you did your best. But if you're playing one of the best decks in the format, you gotta be prepared to go X X O X one X two maybe at the at the low end to get in. Uh, you can't just. I'm gonna play. T- I'm not, I don't want to use that example because that's that, that'd be directed towards Miles, and I think that's rude because his deck was. I actually really liked watching his deck perform. Um, I would say like the snake band decks that were really at the top tables all day, and one got diversified. One of the the girl who played it was um, Abby was, something. Yeah, she was playing snake man and was just rolling people. People were just like, like that's a deck that. You don't want to admit you have to be prepared for, but you have to have some way to stop the multiples or you just die. <laughs> I was under the impression that Snake Man was always a thing and he wasn't going away. He literally he was he's just. He's always there. Yeah, he's it, always he's there. Actually, he's always there, but he's never like. But no, when, when Jeffrey Khan's not rolling in with Snake Man, you're like, okay, I can play Snake Man. I got a chance here. And one of the guys from Vegas and Abby were playing, the only two playing Snake Man, and they were in the top 16 both of them and it was they did really well they played really well um you, you just have to have an idea of the format like it, it's this is where i my the objective of a lot of things that I, like we'll go into where what my what i mean by my objective with a couple of things um is people sometimes just don't take into account results of bpcs who's playing what decks to identify where decks are in the format that's really it uh, and I'm scared. I feel that some people got really disheartened when they were like, "Oh, I'm playing this deck, and it's not getting the the plan. It's not doing as well as I thought because they just couldn't get there." I don't know really how else to say it. It's it's kind of tough. Like, you ever ever played? Ever got the? If you played, if you went to Worlds or went to Nationals this year, you played the deck you wanted to play, and you made top sixteen. Good job. That's what I'll tell everybody. And if you went to play or playing one of the best decks and you diversified somebody out to get, claim your top spot, great for you too. That's the best way I can say it. All right. Um, but I felt the personally, I felt the room was was more positive than negative most of the weekend. Um, the, the sneak preview cards they po- they released they roasted uh through the weekend uh Malian, Vincent Gray Zoe and the action the rare action stop all had people buzzing um I don't think a lot of the characters in the set are very overpowered but I think they are very 
support oriented or just cards that characters you want in the format and they'll be a lot of fun to play uh like the new action stop looks amazing it's a three four no no sorry zero four plus three mid block uh good order earth response remove when you block with this part card commit your opponent's character and I told Shane straight up that that card was a promo and was out before this event. This would have been a completely different world. Or Nationals. Keep thinking it's Nationals. Cause time of the year, stuff like that. But yeah, it was Nationals. Um, but yeah, I'm... I think that they... I think that it... This Battle for Power meta is definitely a race car format where you're off to the races immediately on turn two, sometimes even turn one. Uh, ask Piglet about that. He was Mark LeBlanc threw three attacks on his turn one at Piglet. <laughs> like he went check a five, check a five, check a six, and committed his character, and then built two. Like that's how he ran down Napalm Man playing Felicia. It was kind of amazing to hear about it. Okay. Yeah, that's sometimes what you got to do. I did it. Um, I played against Kim and Team twice, and I just went. Blow up your blow up your one foundation that could randomly do something for you. Attacked on turn one twice, built two, go. Went to do the same next turn, and like that's how I killed Kim Dex. Also, that a mathematician because no one knows what mathematician does, but it's ridiculous. <laughs> hmm. So yeah. all this hate that was going around, do you think it was just by the people that got rolled by some of the more aggressive decks, or? Yeah. I mean, there was nine Turbo Mans at the start of that tournament. Everybody thought Turbo Man was, like, Turbo Man just kind of, like, and Marco, I think, placed it best when he was on uh, Tough Deck Heroes earlier this week. He said, when the deck's hot, it's hot, and it rolled perfectly. But when that deck decides to take a dump, it's going to take a dump hard. And let me tell you, I, wa I, I played against the Turbo Man in, the, it, was my, my, it was my first win, I, I, I rolled it. I just was like, oh, you checked a one on your block to my Tengu Dive. My Tengu Dive hits for six. Uh, play another Tengu Dive. Oh, my next Tengu Dive hits. Play my range attack. You're dead. It, that, that happened. You like get a safe block with Templar, and he checked a one, and he couldn't pass it. And that was his last card in hand. Hmm. Ugh. But yeah, I, I, like I said, the whole weekend, great time. Uh, I want to thank uh, Nando Argon. Fernanda, thank you very much for letting us play in the Rochester crew stay with you. Uh, you and your cat Bella were great hosts. <laughs> uh, I got to eat a lot of Chick-fil-A. I ate a lot of random Mexican food. Uh, yeah. I, I, I was happy with my trip. There was nothing about it that really salted me or anything. Sweet, there we go. Yep. So it's not as bad as we think, people. So we will move on to spoilers. Yep. Uh, for, and just to be fair, guys, I am going to have a very weird criticism about the last card we do, but, you know, I think it's kind of worth it. Uh, Are we doing all three, the three melee end cards, right? Uh, the four, yes. Yeah, the four. Okay. And then we'll look nice. at the eight four, which is not real four, but we'll get into that. Okay. Uh, so Malian and they have officially confirmed that purple from now on, the uh, purple blade here is confirmed to be the colored notation for characters. As It'll well, depend on the set. Okay, uh, so it's going to depend on the set. They they, they said it. There's going to be some things that are going to be set dependent. There's going to be an artistic look individually for different sets based on their licenses. Okay. Uh, it, I think it's a, and it's also a way that they can work stuff out, work things as they go through it. Um, I'll tell you the one thing that I thought I would hate about the new the new card design, but I actually really like now, um, the symbols being on the side. No, that so actually. Oh, uh, did you see any of last I, week's I, episode? I'm sorry to say, Joe, I was not, I had not yet had a chance to. No. Um, I was having issues watching it at work today. Ah, uh, uh, Chris and I had talked about that, and we actually discussed that it's actually better that they're on the side than up here, because it makes okay. symbol chaining for new players a lot easier. Oh, yeah. That was the one thing I liked about it. Um, I will say one thing, guys. A lot of the cards, 
when you look at them as on these screenshot ones where they're kind of like a little overlaid, a little like tight, but when they're on a printed card, the all of these cards look great. I I, I thought I hated the template, but it, like it looks it looks very weird on the because it's a little lighter, especially the foundations. They look a little lighter on the on the shots we're seeing, but they're actually a lot darker and they have a right they right have the colors right. So give them a second look once you see physical versions. I think you'll you'll like what you see. Yeah. But anyways, let's go into let's go into talking about her. Yep. Yeah. Cool. So she is a five twenty seven all order in water. Uh enhanced during your turn reveal two foundations from your hand, draw one card. E, once per turn, reveal two attacks from your hand. This attack gets plus X or minus X damage. X equals this attack's printed damage. Um, I really don't know how to feel about her because your first E, you're giving away information just for the sake of draw. Yep. Uh, your second enhance, you're giving away information to either plus yourself or minus the opponent. Um... I don't like, I mean, it's better than her original format, because I believe her original, you had to have two of the same named card. Yeah, you had to have a matching pair. So, I mean, this makes her a little bit more viable than uh, what's normally mm -hmm. um, for her last incarnation. I am not sure about her only being 27 health with five hand size. That I seems... think the repeat of draw is what makes her, like... <sighs> I understand you have to show two foundations for the draw effect, and when you're going off and you might somehow not have two foundations anymore, and you just stop drawing attacks, yeah, she's not going to be amazing. But like your your objective is when you go play an attack on the consistency number, you should be close to getting to keeping two foundations up. Yeah. Where if you sorry, you have two foundations in hand to go reveal draw a card, and then. That one point you'll get two attacks and you're like, all right, play my bet attack plus four damage or plus six damage depending on the attack. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's very conditional. Do you, you think she's you, like her 27 hand life very much uh, values uh, with her other abilities working? I think looking at her, she may be better off that uh, water build that maybe. Uh... Lilith is best known for because you can do long attack chains and continue getting those uh that draw to keep the chain That's going. True. Uh, uh, I think I think she might be really good with Team Kim. Yeah, I think she'll be good with like, Team Kim too. Like do my reveal, make a check. Oh, I know what's on top of my deck for my next attack, or I do a four jack attack, a four jack attack, which is pretty cool. Or all so, with all that draw. Yeah. Not really feeling it off of order. Order, order you get weapons. Yeah. You really get, order you get weapons. Weapons are, and weapons are kind of valuable right now in the game. They yeah. have a, they have a theme. Uh, Matt Buffet, Matt Buffet was playing Yellow Devil weapons, uh, during singles. Let me tell you, that deck was, I, he had some really bad checks, but his deck, when I watched him play his deck a couple of times, I was like, damn, that deck is scary if it just starts ramming, ramming the right amount of damage into you. Yeah. So, right, so which one are we talking about next? Uh, next up we got Trusted Keeper, which is a 2 difficulty 4 plus 3 mid block. Uh, static ability of after this foundation is revealed from your hand, during this during the enhanced step, your attack gets plus 1 damage. Enhance, add this card to your hand, commit one of your opponent's foundations. Um, this one, I would say you play for the static, not for the bottom, because you're mining yourself a resource to be able to get a draw or a damage buff, yeah. so you're not really plusing is, or uh, negging, you're just kind of breaking even for an effect. It's it's alright. Um, I like it because it's kind of like, I call it, I, I have it, my nickname for this card is Little Ever Hopeful, because it's, you're bouncing to do something to interact with your opponent's board, but it's not bouncing their board, it's just committing. And it's not repeatable, it's just like a one shot. You're just like, E, I'm gonna pick this up. Commit that. Commit like, that. Then her E reveal, draw a card. Reveal, redraw damage. Like you're really trying to get the trusted keeper humanity sentry pair going. Where you're just like plus one plus one, draw a card. Like you, you. She she has some cool stuff. I think she has some one of those characters where like you can play a lot of fun interactions and you'll get there. Yeah. That's what I like about her. 
And next up we got... I kind of thought they would put out another card today, but they didn't. Um, Humanity Sentry. 1-5, plus 3 high. Static ability after this card is revealed uh, from your hand during your enhanced step. This, your attack gets plus 1 speed. Enhance pop the card back to your hand. I like this one significantly better for the numbers alone. Mm. And, you know, plus 1 speed is just decent because it gives us, it's essentially a plus 1 to their block. Yeah. It's it's not bad. It's uh, it's an emergency block, especially if you go into that late game. You really need to make sure you're blocking high. Uh, you you want to have this card available to you. Mm -hmm. That's what I like it. That's what I like it for. And what? also, it's just like I want to randomly reveal this this card or the other one with Raiden and be like, random reveal. Oh, plus one damage. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> it could be so funny. Well, I mean, I like this one better because it is a spam, so if you pick it back up just for the bonus and you can play it again, you play it at an easier play it as an easier cost. Yeah. You definitely can go pick it up, make the pair like especially if you don't have a pair. You're like you like you drew four attacks on a foundation, you're like, play my first attack, pick this up, reveal now you're going. And then you just play it back down again. Yeah. It's not bad. Like this card has a lot of value. These this is this is a good spam. Mm -hmm. This is a really good spam, and I'm happy it's better than like the Mega Man 05 that like you discard momentum to pick it up. Like I think this is just this is what I like seeing. Yeah. Like you want those ability to like make your foundations block well and do something with. This is a great card to example with. Yep. Uh Finally, we got the promo slash Dragon Bite. Promo. Yep, Dragon Bite. So, Dragon Bite is four difficulty, three plus one low block, zero mid for four. Uh, powerful three, stun two, and weapon. Reveal two foundations from your hand. Attack gets plus two speed. So, this can compound with the two we just previewed, uh, yep. giving this essentially plus three speed, making this three mid for five. Or potentially four mid for four, or uh, two mid for six, depending on which how you reveal your yeah. pairs. Um, this is a pretty good card. Uh, I like the artwork, and we're gonna get into that in just a little bit. But overall, this is a very good attack, very powerful. Uh, good way to either start. Uh, start a uh, string, or perhaps at the end of maybe a three-hit poke string, uh, and then pop the powerful at the end. Oh yeah, um, this card I think was actually the missing. I I, um, I played against the Tomahawk Man in singles. It was playing off of Chaos, and I really think this just made Tomahawk Man an order character, like zero mid for four stun two weapon like. It's just the perfect numbers for playing Tomahawk, man. Yeah, they got like, a pass that's, always, that's, what, that's what he needed. He needed another attack that could just have inherent stun and be game. Like, it's just like, go all in with this card. It could be great to play. Like, Tomahawk, man, could be a really cheap character to build out of his own stuff and be like, present to people. I'm like, here, this is Tomahawk, man. His deck cost you, 10, cost you $15, and it's insane. Yeah. So, there's that. Now, we're going to look at this picture, because I have an issue with what Jasco describes as full art attacks. So, oh, they zoomed in. They super zoomed in. Oh, they, they did more than super zoom in with this thing. And I, I, for the life of me, I don't know why they're even calling it full art. So, this is the full art version. There's no yeah. borders, which is fine. Uh, the picture is zoomed in to the point where, and let me put, actually put it up. Sorry about that. Uh, zoomed in to the point where part of, uh, part of Baelcourt is actually cropped out of the picture that he's in fully. My biggest issue here is that we have the design for full art characters. We know what they can do for full art. I don't mind the Dragon Bite is here. That is perfectly acceptable because you need yeah, the name of the is, card. This is a promo. This is like a, this is the entry promo. This is the pre-release entry promo. That's what this is. The orange like, box does not need to be there, however. Yeah. 
I kind of see what you mean. Um, I, yeah, it's all right. I mean, it, it it's so zoom. It, it it's roughly one of those ones. I I they've got to work. Like I definitely because they took an art for that was on a generic on a basic attack, mm-hmm. and then like they they just expanded and zoomed in. Not every attack, you, not every piece of art, you can do that. That's oh no! What I'm gonna say in my way, like this card should have definitely had like transparent wording so you could see art, more of the art. No, all they had to do finished. leave the picture alone. Don't zoom in. You get the full body for Baelcor, which is perfectly fine. You remove yep. the borders. You make the orange part that gives our abilities completely gone. You remove. Mm-hmm. You move the attack symbol somewhere else. Or the whatever we're calling this, the card identifier box. Yeah. Somewhere else. You could even put it like right above the block because there's a lot of static space right above that speed or right below the block. You're not losing out on anything. This is not full art, people. This is just a zoomed in picture with a orange box. Now, just so you does have good valid points, I'm just saying that I don't constitute this as full art. I've seen, we've seen full art cards with the character cards. We know what they can do. Yes. So I like the attack. <laughs> the attack's great. The attack is a great design. Like, it's needed. Like, the, this, this, this is a common. It's a weapon. It's not a slam. It's, like, it has a plus one low block. Oh, so <laughs> nice. Like I want to play your. I really want to play. Tur- I, I'm gonna probably try to build a 27 attack. Uh, T hawk. Uh, Tomahawk man deck. No, no, After you got to commit to that T hawk. The T hawk clan. Oh yeah. I mean, he is the least racist character that of the Mega Man ones they could have chosen. This I'm is true. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. <laughs> All right. So we are done with that. Uh, before we get to our announcements, we got uh, interesting nerding. I want your response on the Switch. The Switch? Nintendo Switch. Oh, it's amazing. Um, I I love that, that, that Nintendo's not even confirming that any game that was shown in the trailer is actually, actually on the system, like any of the third-party trailers. Because, like, they showed... Looks like would look like an NBA 2K video game. It looks like they showed a Skyrim, Skyrim remastered on there. Uh, like, even Blizzard is saying, "Sorry, go ahead." Yeah, I mean it's 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 great. Um, I think it's the next step in Nintendo trying to keep their market share. Uh, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna get to that point like we're. The 3DS is starting to get to the end of its life cycle, and you got to start combining the the handheld. Like if they, as long as this if this thing has amazing battery life, if somehow Nintendo dumped a ton of money into a battery life option for this thing, and this thing will last like in handheld mode for four hours, that'll be amazing. I'll give it if it lasts if it lasts two hours, it's okay. But I like the idea that I can go home. I could be like, I'm going to go home and play my game. And I'm going to go put it on this mount. The mount connects it to the TV, and I just sit there and keep playing. Now, I'm like, getting, I'm going to ask you, because it showed the Pro Controller. Are you actually going to use the Joy-Con, or are you just going to use the Pro Controller while you're at home? And it's in I console would, mode. I would hope that there will be... A, the, I hope the base bundle... This is my hope is for the base bundle for this. It will be the console... Uh, with the I mean the sidearms, one of the control, one of the pro controllers, and then like two games, like I will like like something like something that's I mean, I'm I'm I have a feeling that because of this system has been mostly hyped on, that's gonna be like a Legend of Zelda. There's gonna be that like new Legend of Zelda game is gonna be the the hype game. Uh, I see it being Mario and Zelda like the old school Nintendo. Well, yeah, like those are gonna and those are the bundle. Like it'll be new Mario launch title, this Zelda game that's already been out for a few months on the Wii U. That yeah. is my hope. Uh, 
I am honestly torn about that. Oh, by the way, uh, Blizzard said it is trying to get in contact with Nintendo to put a Hearthstone on this thing. You know what? Why not? It might be the only console that you could actually do it. Yeah. Because it's it's a it's supposed to be a touchscreen. Yeah. Like that that like why not? Well, so's the Vita, but I don't know why yeah. Hearthstone's not on the Vita. Eh, it's kind of hard to. There was a, I know there's got to be something because they're using the PSN network. It's like I don't know. Like it's hard to I don't know. Let's see what let's see what Blizzard does. If Blizzard can get Hearthstone. If I can get like if I can get literally sit there and play Hearthstone on like if I can have the touch screen out, but I can sit there and watch Hearthstone on my T V and play it and just use like a touch use like a like a like a, little, a stylus and just play it, God I would love it. Or Diablo. It like, or Diablo Diablo would be fun. Uh I personally I just I'm like everybody else right now, I don't really care about specs. I'm not a specs person. I just want to see how long the battery life is. I don't care what kind of graphics card it is. It 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 doesn't matter to me. Um, with all these indie games coming out right now, that they are eight bit, but they still provide fantastic gaming experience. I think that the ooh pretty shiny new graphics obsession is going to just fall to the wayside eventually. But um, no, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, it looks interesting to me. It looks very, very new. Uh, they definitely yep. dropped the ball with the new 3DS with the thumb pad. I mean, only one game took advantage of that. Yeah, I've been... I Actually, actually there's a few games. Uh, the Majora's Mask remake on there uses it, too. Oh, does it? Because you, you need it to be able to control the camera better. Ah. Uh, I'm still having it. I, I never played Majora's Mask when I was a kid. I still can't get out of the... Uh, the, the three the first three nights of the game where you have to get like like it's like timed ish. That's I the whole game. What? That's the whole game. You mean those three days I'm supposed to be I'm I'm at day three and I can't get out of the city still. I can't catch the kids. I just keep every night oh night ended. I can't get out of the city again. <laughs> Damn. I was gonna say no, all three days is the whole game, Jesse. But I've been three days already. Congrat well, yeah, I'll, so, I'll, I'll explain the scenario of what this game really is to you after <laughs> the show. I, I, I'm too much of an explorer person and trying to figure things out, and I'm just not catching I'm not getting it. Like, I'm literally sad. I, I should literally just get um, Ocarina. I should have just gotten Ocarina of Time and started on easy. Started on that. Link's trapped no, in some I, sort of like extra dimensional purgatory where you have to use the Song of Time to move between the three days to affect uh, certain things to resolve people's issues and quests. Oh, fun. Oh, once you get out into the world, you also meet, like, other things and become other creatures, like how you were that dead Deku kid. Yeah. Yeah, dead Zora dude and dead uh, Goron dude, so... You, you get... You're going through the stages of grief in this game. Gotcha. <laughs> I was like, you haven't gotten past three days yet. What? <laughs> no, uh, the NX, the Switch. The only other thing that came today from the Switch being announced is I guarantee you the Will Smith Switch uh, music video probably got so many hits today. Just randomly? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I actually checked it out. There was like 18 comments saying, say, I came here because of Nintendo. <laughs> So I'll, I'll tell you my other big thing is like this week, they, I, I I got back to work on Tuesday or on Wednesday and I was like, man, it's gonna be a rough week. It's gonna be a long week. Oh and yeah. And then on Wednesday we got the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer with just enough to get me started, and then the next day Fox decides to drop the Logan trailer a week early to just I think to mess with Marvel Studios, and the Logan trailer blew the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer out of the water. Um, I think the Red Brand trailer uh, does it better, but I don't think... The International Red Brand, yeah, yeah. Well, the International and the trailer we got are the same thing maybe for, like, say, an extra five seconds of one-shot proving... Oh, by the way, this is ready to drop. What? Watching, from watching uh, Hugh Jackman just Wolverine claw somebody through their skull just made it all worth it. Oh, 
Pets on the International trailer slash Red Band one. Um, where you just I, literally just murder somebody. Like, not... Just, you know, it was so good. Um, and apparently this is also marking the last time that not only Hugh Jackman will be in an X-Men film, but also Patrick Stewart will be retiring his role. That is the supposed rumor. Um, I'm fine with that. Patrick Stewart has done enough work. He 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 has lived through. If there was a man who rode out the, the whole X Men universe with Fox, like it's him and Hugh Jackman, and the fact that they're in like this final film together where there kind of looks like there's it's like a thing going on with their involvement. Awesome. I want to know how the professor's still alive, outliving everybody else. That's what we're gonna figure. That's gonna be the big, the big question because we don't know what timeline they're using, where we're at. There's everything's kind of out, out there. Yeah. Oh, uh, what else? Oh, we already even talked about that one. So yeah. So Jesse, go ahead and tell me your news, and we'll tell my news, and we'll wrap it. All right, everybody. So, um, I have been here a part of Total Justice Gaming since early winter 2014. Uh, I've enjoyed these past more or less two years with Joe. I uh, met Matt Hughes for a time. We've had a lot of special guests. It's been great. Um, but I am going to be moving on. Uh, I'm going to be making content directly for Rochester CCG. I will not be doing uh, live stream content, though. Uh, my objective is to do pre-videoed content. Uh, specifically aimed at UFS deck building, sideboard, uh, sideboard building, meta deck finding. Like helping, I want to be able to feel the log into my videos the week before a PTC, and I'm so I hope my plan is be like, there's a PTC this week. Here are the decks that have been doing hot at at the, P- the last few PTCs. Here are cards you should know about. Like having like a a pure hype video for PTCs, having things once in a while talking about decks. Uh, interactions, card interactions people should be aware of. Uh, making people better players is my main objective. Um, I'm referring my current tentative name of this is I am the de- I, I, it's going to be the Deck Doctor. Uh, name's tentative. We're working. It might change, but right now that's where it's currently at stand. I am planning to get a stethoscope that I will wear during all of my videos though. Hmm. And I may have to show I may plan to show up at, at World this year in literally, like, scrubs. I may play in scenes of, in scrubs this year, is my plan. <laughs> but, yeah, I have, I really want to, I'm John, I talked to Sean about it, and he definitely wants to see what I can do and bring and bring me under the banner. Um, I think I like the idea of making content on my own time. I'm not, I, I, I love doing every, th- having my, spending my Thursday nights with you most of the time, Joe. Oh, yeah. But I am fine. My Thursday nights are getting more and more People want to do stuff, and now I'm not on weekends. It's like, I can go out Thursday night and kind of just roll into work Friday and get through work. I don't have two more days of work to deal with. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, Joe, this has been an amazing time, and I I, I appreciate you giving me a, a chance to join the show and being a part oh, of yeah. it for this long. No, absolutely. It's an absolute pleasure, and I really, really hope everything works out for you over there. Thank you. Welcome. Not to mention, I gave him a great deal on cards that, like, no one knows about. (laughs) Uh, And with Jesse leaving, I'm also stepping out. Uh, Total Justice Gaming's not ending, but Jesse and Matt were really the only reason I continued with the UFS game. Um, uh, UFS format on the show, we tried uh, adding in a couple new things. Uh, I don't play anymore. Uh, there's never probably going to be UFS in the Tennessee State uh, for a long, long time. Uh, not unless someone know, else... Man, if, ever, if the release schedule for this year hold, holds together, people might start asking around again. Well, if it does, it does. Um, no. You know, I have left, came on for two years. Uh, this is our 190th video. Uh, I don't know many shows that are going to be sticking around that long. I hope to God that uh, it's not Legendary Wolf. Uh, UFS University stays around that long. I hope uh, Top Deck Hero stays around that long. Uh, I have a very untold legacy in 
UFS. I've never done anything. I've never gone anywhere. I did the show. Uh, surprisingly, I am one of the two or three minds behind Turbo. Despite what Jason or Shane will tell you, despite what any jazz code thing will tell you, uh, Turbo was created in a Chinese uh, restaurant in Murfreesboro, Tennessee called Daly's with myself, Paul Taylor, and Scott Gaines just sitting around and BSing because Jason couldn't think of a format to help kill time between rounds. We came up with Turbo. <laughs> now, we came up with the concept of Turbo. Uh, which apparently Giggles has mastered that. <laughs> it really feels like it. I mean, <laughs> you got to say one thing. There was people I, at every time we I, I travel with Giggles, and I'm like, okay, cool, okay, cool, okay, cool. And then I think this was the first event that I went to with Jeff, where like there's no Sean backing him up. And they, it's like Jeff had to stand on his own a lot of this weekend. And he did an amazing job doing it. Oh, absolutely. And I got to see Jeffrey Kahn silence a room, which was amazing. Uh, in round set, uh, five, he played Piglet uh, for the for the XO to become the, uh, the, the XO in the tournament. And Jeff went full gig- – like, not even full giggles, though. Jeff did all of the math and just mathed beat – uh, Piglet out of the game. It was amazing to watch, and then Jeff bursted out that they Paul Man's got nothing on you. Uh, I'm obviously censoring Jeffrey Khan, but we hear him yell that across the whole room, and then the room just dead silence for a moment, and then the game, everybody's games continued, <laughs> was showing that like Jeff decided he had to take a to take a step up and be a you know be a big guy, big be a big boy for a round. Um. And on top of that, uh, what's the only what's the other thing I've done uh, aside from this show? Aside from hopefully inspire two other shows to pop up. Um, oh yeah, uh, Angry Joe's involvement with Jasco Games also me. <laughs> uh, I tossed out his name and uh, the only other streamer I love watching, Maximilian. He covers fighting games. Tossed to Nathan. Nathan got in contact with both of them. Uh, or just Joe, I think, because I think he wanted Max as a hype man, but Max was working on Killer Instinct at the time, because he's, uh, I think, principal, one of the animators or story writers for uh, mm -hmm. the KI game. But no, Angry Joe's involvement with Jasco, me. <laughs> uh, I've done a good long, long story legacy in this game. Uh, so, you know, bowing out after, God, I don't know, 2008? 2008 when uh, Fortune and Glory came out? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, walked, in the store, walked into Paul's store, uh, tried to get a Versa lead back up. Saw Iori, went from there. Mm -hmm. Good long time. No hard feelings yeah. on anybody. I love everybody to death. Well, I'll, I'll take that back. There's like Who maybe, knows? Maybe we'll, maybe we'll quote cross paths, Joe Tanel. Maybe we'll... Maybe we'll they'll be maybe they at some point in the next two years UFS will be back full time at Gen Con and you'll be there running playing something else and you'll make a walk over to the table and there will definitely be a group shot of the Total Justice Gaming team. Oh, yeah. We have to redo the photo at least at one other point at a later time. Am I gonna have to so take just, that down for legal reasons, by the way? Why? I don't know. It's Sean. <laughs> no. Don't don't <laughs> I mean, look, guys, you've seen me be skinny, fat, and skinny again. I've gone full Oprah. Oh, <laughs> I, I look, I, I, you just see me with a beard or no beard. That's my, like, I literally pull up old videos like, man, I do not look good without a beard. I really need to keep the beard. That's all it tells me. So, moving forward, Total Justice Gaming, as you can see in the background, probably going to be more Vanguard and Bushiro game related. God help me, not white shorts. I do not have time for white rewards. But, um... Isn't that luck and logic, though? No, that's, that's Lolly Wars. I don't know, man. There's a lot of waifus in that game. Ugh, not for me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Um, also, the show date will be changing. I'll probably be doing these from Sunday since I can do smaller videos and talks. 
Uh, maybe bring on a guest every now and then, although it's Cardfight Vanguard, so those talks are going to be pretty limited. And mm -hmm. deck profiles and certain cards, maybe, th maybe just like, you know, random thoughts or what the hot new thing is. But, you know, I'll be producing yeah. content or I'll be streaming something. I don't know, but no... I think Jazco and uh, UFS and I are done for the time. Two years is a good long, long time. Yep. And, you know, as much as I harp on Jazco, I wanted to be very clear. I love everybody in this community. Everybody to death. Save for like two people, which we won't get into. <laughs> for very, very good, good reasons. Um... I harbor no ill will against anybody personally, be it Jason, despite what I think, despite what I said all the last Christmas. I love Shane to death. I love the community. I love everybody that worked at Jazzco. Uh, I miss them all terribly since they left. Uh, I like what everybody's doing now, and I hope it continues. Uh, I hope Kevin and Sean and Matt, is Matt doing Top Deck Heroes? Is it just Kevin and... Matt's not even involved anymore. Matt works too much. Oh, okay. Well, no, no. It's not he works too much. It's he's just, he's working. I mean, that's really about it. Ah. He's working. Uh, he's, being, he's got other things going. He is starting to become the miniatures guy uh, at Millennium, uh, which is takes a lot of learning because, you know, he's never been really into miniatures. Uh, but he... Is doing he did a lot. He's doing a lot now. Matt is I, I think for one thing, I will say this about when Matt started working at Millennium, I gave him three months. I said I said, you know what, I'm gonna give him three months. Cause I'm gonna see how uh, is he'll either mesh with everybody there or he will not it will not be his thing and it won't work out. But I'm happy that he's he's got the Star Wars Destiny releases coming up and he's yeah. gonna be taking that over to run. It's a great thing for him. Like, you know, find a game and be a part of it. Uh, if he's the miniature guys, tell him Blood Angels and uh, Wolves Suck. <laughs> uh, tell him I know the uh, head principal writer for Heavy Gear personally, if he needs anything from the Heavy Gear people. Mm -hmm. uh, what other minis are there out there? Uh, tell him the ghost is probably really busted for Star Wars. Probably not. <laughs> but it's got choppers, so it probably is. Uh, other than that, no. Uh, everybody that's doing the content, continue for the two years. Beat out 190 videos. Be dedicated. God knows you got to be dedicated, because we have gone through such dry, dry spells uh, mm -hmm. on this show, and we still put out, found ways to put out content. And, Mark, don't think I'm forgetting you. You were there with me for a long, long time, and I love you to death. That uh, is true. I forget that Slam was, like, before us. He was he was stepping up. Yeah, it was me alone. Well, it was me and one other guy, and then he quit, like, one episode afterwards because he wanted to go do Power Rangers the card game, thinking that was going to be the next biggest thing out there. Uh, then Slam came on for a very long time, then it was you guys, then it was just down to you, so, you know, uh, anybody wants to help me try and run, uh, the Card Fight Buddy Fight version, let me know, let me know in the comments. Yep. Uh, we're probably gonna be doing shows Sunday afternoon. Other than that, guys, we're done for the night. Uh, we're done with the UFS show for quite a bit, unless something happens, or... Uh, you see me guest star on some one of the other two shows. Uh, <laughs> never know, man. You, yeah, I know. You never know. You, sometimes you just need a break. <laughs> like, like that's the, I will take the words from Col Kurt. I, I actually, for the first time at Nashville, have had a conversation with Kurt Polker. I've just never had the ability to. And we had a conversation. It's like he, he's just kind of been like showing up to events, playing playing what's given to him. And now it's like his community is coming back together. And he's like kind of got that like got that that bug again like he really wants to own cards 